Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to do something a little different. You see our friends at Hooded Horse granted me access to Manor Lords, a game that a lot of us have been looking at, especially the historical fans. And I wanted to talk about combat in Manor Lords as a lot of people are quite curious about it. I've been able to play around with it for a decent amount of hours and it's fairly cool, honestly. So let's talk about this, right? This is a fairly new playthrough. I was just playing around trying out a different loadout, different build, different stylings and a a brickened band decided to attack me. So yeah, every now and then these guys can pop up. They'll come in various different sizes by the way, it's not just a small group like this, but early on it fits well with me as I don't have a lot of troops. You can add troops from the beginning and we'll talk about that a little bit later, as you'll always start off with some spears and shields. And you don't always have your troops up and running, like say for example a Total War game, because your troops here are a militia band, these are your civilians, these guys are the people who are doing your normal day to day work. So when a threat does appear, you're going to have to deploy them, you just go onto the army tab there and rally them to a location where they'll be going back home, they'll be picking up their weaponry and then going out to meet the enemy or wherever location you've sent them to. You'll want to rally them away from the enemy. The main thing is you don't want some troops arriving before anyone else and then getting killed because yeah, that can happen. And to be honest, I would rather lose as little civilians as possible because these guys are my Fletchers, these guys are my farmers and stuff like that and I don't want them dying out. But combat itself is actually pretty cool. As you can see, I'm putting my troops up in a line and then meeting up with the enemies. My guys are in more defensive position. Well, balanced actually, I should have had them more defensively. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of matched combat here. Uh, one of two of my guys actually are really straggling behind, not getting into the combat early on. <laughs> it does happen, maybe he woke up a little bit late. But seeing so much match combat is actually pretty cool. Uh, the animations are wonderful, and actually you can see quite a lot of them. There's a kill animation that will show up, I believe, in this clip, which is uh, pretty grim. You know, the guy gets knocked down and then hit him with a shield in the neck. Essentially, I think that's what it was. I was playing this very, very late at night. It was a long, long session. Combat can obviously take a while because uh, it's just one unit versus one unit. These guys have basic hand weapons. Uh, I have spears and shields. It's not going to be like some other games where combat goes really, really quickly, but it's not going to be large scale warfare too, so keep that in mind. I've had a few largish battles and maybe later in the game, as this game develops more, yeah, you will probably see more and more, but early on, small skirmishes, if you start getting a few good number of troops, you're going to be perfectly fine. My only real complaint about combat so far from these like first few hours is that when the enemy breaks like this, you don't have the option to just run them through, which would have been absolutely amazing because... Well, I'm a bloodthirsty warlord, right? <laughs> it's one of those things when it comes to games like this, but that's not too bad. Overall combat is very fluid when it's a one-to-one. -one. Now, the troops themselves will be bloodied afterwards and so on. After you're done, just to span the troops, send them home, let them get some rest, it's kind of needed. Because, yeah, they can get tired, there's a lot of factors that come into play, like, for example, fighting on home turf, fighting in enemy turf, and all that type of stuff. But obviously, if there's enemies attacking, I can't just have spearmen. One unit of spearmen is not going to be enough, and you need to produce armaments. So keep in mind that this is a city builder game, right? It's a simulation game. Depending how old you are, you've probably played games like Banished, Pharaoh, whatever. Yeah, this is like that, but on steroids. So yeah, you're going to have to build up some stuff. And the great thing is if you've got some large houses, you can turn them into a Fletcher shop, which I've already done. So you can start producing bows and other houses as you start upgrading them, right? You can turn them into places to make some shields, some armaments and so on. It's not just like buildings on the side where you get a blacksmith and so on, but yeah, more like in the medieval times where some people would be doing that from the comfort of their own homes if their homestead was large enough. But yeah, that does mean that you're gonna have to focus very heavily on management, really. Well, it is a management game, but it's just something that people need to be aware of because for some reason people thought this was just going to be like a total war game, but no, armies take a while to recruit. You'll need to build up a smithy, you'll need to upgrade a few of the uh, homesteads to be able to, you know, have production coming out. Because if you have no armaments, well, you have no weapons, and no weapons means no militia. Also, I'm just taking a good time here to say, unlike other management games that do have combat, in some cases you do have to build a corpse pit, because, yeah, there's enemies, and you're gonna have to throw them into a pit. Your troops and your people will be buried in a church, though, but yeah. So I've decided to put the corpse pit here next to my farms to kind of roleplay that I'm using them as fertilizer, because, I mean, why not, right? 
So I've done a little bit of work on my town and now we have enough to be able to recruit some archers because range warfare is always king here. Well, at least for me it is. And yeah, we have a really good amount of bows. We don't have a lot of population though. So recruiting a troop of bowmen means that I'm not gonna have a full unit until more people start joining my town, which as people start joining in, I do believe they naturally populate the militia troops if there's space, which is great. I mean, still, I'm starting off with 24 archers and that's better than nothing. And we got 19 spearmen because I do think that we lost one or two. Yeah, we lost one uh, in the previous combat. And we're just gonna move around with them. As you can see, they all look pretty cool. Each of the units look quite distinct. There's not a lot of repeats. There is some every now and then, obviously, with these types of games, it's randomly generated, so it's going to happen. But yeah, you can even see when I'm hovering over troops, there's effectiveness. Because stuff like rainfall is naturally going to make my archers worse. Going up a hill, you know, if I'm fighting up a hill, I'm going to be at a disadvantage. All those natural effects for landscape, for weather, for anything that you can imagine when it comes to like a realistic standpoint of warfare that's going to come into play here and it works quite well because it does make you have to strategize if it's raining very very heavily do i want to bring this unit of archers out do i rather just bring a bunch of swordsmen out instead and yeah they can get tired as they move through long distances this is going to be happening here as i'm moving my troops out to go to a bandit camp that was funny enough Abandoned. I mean, that works for me because I'm able to pick up some treasury from that, but uh, I feel like they might have gone to attack the other faction that shows up with an army every now and then, and the other faction just didn't destroy the camp, which I'm not sure if that was a bug or it's intended. It could happen just because of pathfinding, because sometimes, yeah, you know, the brigands will go out and, and be quite far from said camp, like, well, for example, them attacking me. Mercenaries exist, by the way, and you can hire big squads. Sometimes it's two groups, sometimes it's three. I do believe that they can be a bit larger, and they do obviously do vary in terms of what they can do, but... Yeah, I mean, they're a bit expensive early games, so I don't think there's much of a point, unless you're, like, really going to be overwhelmed, because, yeah, it can happen. But here's a populated bandit camp, so we're gonna go deal with that. It's not got a lot of enemies, so I don't feel like we're gonna be struggling at all. And I'm gonna take a force of spearmen and a force of archers, right? Archers are going to be king here, because it's gonna show you how good archers are, especially when it comes to open field, really good weather, no rain. It's, yeah, archers are gonna be key. It's like every other game that has any sort of medieval warfare, range weaponry is going to play a very, very large part. You will also notice in some cases there are some other forces, because there is another faction at play, an AI faction, who is slowly taking control over the playable areas that you're going to want yourself to form a mighty area, you know, and... You're going to want to not let them take everything because the bandit camps there, while they can be annoying, the bandit camps will be there to take resources from you and so on. And the other faction can easily take care of them. You want it because that's going to give you a little bit more boost in terms of treasury. It's going to get you some fame, essentially. So if you can take out the brigand camps before they do... Obviously, sometimes you're not going to be able to. They're really far up and you might not have the troops... Once you get some archers, yes, but if you're struggling to get some archers up and running, don't do so. I have noticed that the aggro range is fairly decent, which allows me to get my troops up and running, and as they start coming down, this could change in the future, by the way, uh, I'm just forming up formations, right? My archers arrive first because they're a little faster, my spearmen are then getting into range and preparing themselves for the inevitable charge, and yeah, now I just have to wait for them to come down to me. I am a defensive type of player, so I'm going to play fairly defensively. It doesn't really take too long for them to get to me. The areas are quite large, so by the time that they actually do get to me, they're going to be a bit tired, their morale is going to be low, and when it comes to this situation, they're not even going to hit me, they're going to break literally before they get to my uh, troops. Well, actually, it's more like when they get to my troops, like literally on that last second. Obviously, their morale can break and they're going to run away and flee. And when you're being peppered by arrows from a long distance, yeah, your morale is going to drop. This is why I'm saying that archers are very, very strong. I really hope they don't get nerfed because they've been helping me through my own proper playthrough at the very beginning just to kind of get everything up and running. 
And before you say anything, these are basic brigands, right? They're just attacking you with basic hand weapons and so on. It's not like these are well-trained soldiers, so they're going to break much faster than a proper army. Once you start dealing with a more dangerous enemy, they're going to have better troops, better equipment, better weaponry, better morale. So you're going to need better troops yourself. But before that, take advantage of the bandit camps naturally just popping up through the map and start waging some, well, it's not even war, skirmishes when it comes to that point. But it does help. It does help to be able to have some treasury coming in, which will help you in the long run and also help you claim some areas. If you want to claim the other zones, really dealing with some bandit camps is going to help you do that. I haven't been claiming them early on. What I like to do is build up and just kind of expand at a really quick pace. It might not work for everyone. This is the great thing about these types of games where you do have a lot of freedom to just muck around. And there we go, a little bit of proof that the AI does actually go for the bandit camps to clear it themselves. But yeah, okay, so this is something that's quite important. I think it's going to be very useful for you to know. When you build up the buildings like the blacksmith and so on in the various different homesteads, they'll go to a default. So you're going to want to actually make sure that they're building the same thing that you need for, you know, your weapons, your troops, and so on. A joinery and a blacksmith will be the synergizing buildings, but they'll start off producing spears and maybe the small shields. The small shields are actually more for the uh, swordsmen. So make sure that the production is synergizing or else you're going to be producing a lot of armaments, but not for the stuff that you actually need. Personal opinion, you're going to want to stockpile too, because it's always better to have more than less. And yeah, even though it's very easy to switch around, I, for example, want to have a lot of bows just in case I want to feel a decent amount of archers and you can see that over there having enough for around two or three squads is pretty fine for the early game I would say at least that's just how I've been seeing it but then again that's my type of playstyle for pretty much any game if I can play archer if I can have a lot of archers that's what I'm going to have I want to take this point now to divert from combat and just say this game is absolutely stunning I was pleasantly surprised with just in general how great it looks even when you go down into the like the viewer when you play as your baron you know, like, um, it's great. Absolutely great. It's really weird because there's a lot of top-end games that come out that just don't look this good. This is supposed to be a city builder, right? It's supposed to be something that you're going to be from a top-down view. You get up close and personal and you can see so much detail. It is just really, really impressive. And to believe that this studio is pretty much just one dude... Yeah, sure, he's been able to hire some help now after he had a very successful Kickstarter and so on. But, um, yeah, this is impressive. Now, I'm going to leave you off with a fairly large battle. So there is a torrential downpour happening, and I've never had this event happen to me before. A fair amount of brigands just arrived from the south end of the map. They're not actually in the main core map. Caught me a little by surprise because I was just kind of on brain switch off mode and I wasn't actually paying attention to the pop-ups. Uh, but yeah, it's about four groups, I think. And I've got at this point a unit of spearmen, a unit of bowmen and a unit with hand weapons. And yeah, the combat can be kind of total warish here. You know, fight them down, hold them down with your main melee, get your bowmen to the flanks, shoot them from the side or through the rear. It's something that if you're going to be watching this as a Total War fan, which, well, my channel is mostly Total War, uh, I imagine that you're going to be going, well, yeah, you know, this is familiar. Now, I have to really stress that this is not the Total War killer that people seem to, for some reason, say it is, but this is its own thing, it's its own genre, and I tell you what, it's very impressive, I'm having fun. I imagine that there's going to be a bit more content on this. We'll probably do a stream on it, uh, because I feel like a stream will be really, really fun. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below to start a bit of discussion. I'll let the battle play out, and that means that you guys can hear all the sounds and stuff, right? Have a good day, everyone. Oh, 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 oh,